My name is Kristen Schuster and I work in the Department of Digital Humanities at King's College London and for the next few minutes I will be talking to you about normalizing data. So I'm going to start by asking what does it mean, right? What do we mean when we're saying let's normalize our data? For me and my research it's a process of expressing equivalencies between elements in a metadata schema. And so I do this, and I think that the process of normalizing data is a good way to think about the ways you're going to share metadata, right, and data between different databases, right? So the example that I'll be discussing kind of in more depth in a little bit is between an archive and a library, right? And then it's also a good way to plan out and think about metadata aggregation, right? So if you're going to be participating in something like the OAIS protocol for metadata harvesting, right? You need to think about how your data can either be made more granular, which is to say precise and specific, or less granular and more general, which is always something that we should think about. And one of the synonyms that you might hear people using when they're talking about this process is a metadata crosswalk, right? That process of saying, my metadata over here can be shared with your metadata over here. Um, so there are a few strategies that you can that you should approach and think about while you're doing this and the first is to really drill down and identify the scope and purpose of your metadata schema right how are you using parent elements to identify kinds of refinements that could happen with child elements what attributes are you using to kind of refine and become more specific about the function of each element Right. And then you can also think about the scope and purpose of elements in the schema that you're mapping onto. Right. So if we have something like creator in, you know, in an archive or kind of museum's uh, database, and we have author you know, in a library database, how are we going to make sure that author and creator kind of map onto each other logically and can facilitate that exchange of, of names right, associated with these objects? Um, so this gets to that point of, you know, how precise do you need to be in order for a crosswalk to function, right? In order to maintain the kind of integrity and coherence and semantics of the data that you're describing, right? So that you don't lose so much that things kind of fall out of place and, and make no sense. So the example that I have, and there will be an image for us to look at here, is um, an EAD record, right? Encoded archival description. And I have a highlighted field for uh, personal or for creator and personal name, right? And you'll see that there's an attribute that's highlighted that says equivalency, which is 600. And that 600 indicates that should this EAD record be put into a, li a library's database, it would map onto a MARC or machine readable cataloging record um, field 600, which indicates a subject added entry, right? So it's not the author of the book or the letter or the manuscript. Right, but it's the subject of that of that book manuscript you know item in the collection right so it's but it's still a personal name and so you're making sure that as your data goes from your archives database into your library's database it doesn't lose its meaning right because there's inevitably some kinds of disciplinary differences there can be differences in granularity but making sure that you're as precise and coherent as possible is important and that is part of the process of data normalization